This episode brought to you by DoorDash, the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Also brought to you by Liquid IV. Fuel life's adventures and experience better hydration today. Nostalgia critic guy, remember? So you don't have to. It's funny. If you told me there was a Nicolas Cage movie about a treasure map on the back of the Declaration of Independence, made now, straight to DVD with a shoestring budget, I believe you. If you told me it was made by Disney almost 20 years ago with a Jerry Bruckheimer budget, you might see why this stuck out a little bit. Released in 2004, National Treasure won over few critics, but audiences had a pretty good time with it. Not that people actually think there's a treasure map on the back of the Declaration of, you know, I don't know what people think anymore. But let's compromise and say most people watching knew it'd be a fun, dumb idea. If it had the right lead. Nicolas Cage is that perfect lead. I'll even go so far as to say he saves this movie. Now that would have been awful, but it would have been very safe, standard, and boring without him bringing his unique and bizarre charm to the role. This isn't a part that only he could play, but no one else would be able to play it like him or have it work in the same way. He's in on the joke, but he still takes it seriously, so we believe him and we're with him on this ridiculous adventure. What's so ridiculous about it? Well, get out your decoding lemons. Oh yeah, that's a thing in this and we'll uncover the secret. This is National Treasure starring our own National Treasure. First off, I love how the Bruckheimer logo doesn't even show Bruckheimer's name. Like he's this generation's Nike swoosh. He's well known, but he's not that well known. The wait a minute, if I just take some lemons. Ah, well played. It opens with a little boy named Benjamin Franklin Gates. Uh. Snooping around the attic when his grandpa John Adams Gates. I'd be more concerned if these characters weren't nameless. Makes some small talk. Charles Carroll, a member of a secret society known as the Masons, had a secret, a treasure. Not even two minutes in and we already got our dick and crazy. Let me take a bite of my popcorn before I spit it out laughing at this. You see, the knights who found the vaults believed that the treasure was too great for any one man. Grandpa, how come every time I go looking for Christmas gifts you tell me how everything is a lie? It is a lie. Even what I'm telling you is a lie. I do uh, what? We took into his confidence my grandfather's grandfather. So in this flashback containing a flashback containing a flashback. You know, I wonder who the script doctor for this was. We find an ancient treasure was discovered by the Freemasons, but it was deemed too much for any one man to have. So it was hidden away with the Founding Fathers leaving clues because Da Vinci Code was a big hit around this time. The treasure had been hidden again. By then, the Masons included George Washington, Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, this makes total sense. Newly found America not spending a dime of this stuff. You expect me to believe all of our history is founded on greed and never spending money to help others? Actually, you could have made this more far-fetched. The Freemasons among our founding fathers left us clues like these. You see, the treasure is revealed if you just collect a million of these. Once you do that, somehow you'll be rich. You know what that dollar represents? The entire Gates family fortune. John Voigt plays Ben's father, Patrick Gates. Patrick. Henry Gates? Oh, I guess that would be too silly. Now get to where John Adams knights Ben Franklin. You take upon yourself the duty of the Templars, the Freemasons. I so swear. Well, I'll give the movie this. This is the exact backstory I expect Nicolas Cage to have. Oh, not even the character he's playing, just Nicolas Cage himself. For he plays a grown-up Ben still searching for the hidden treasure, along with his accomplices Riley, played by Justin Bartha, and Ian, played by Sean Bean. I'll just get to writing his obituary now. But it's Disney. Is he a parent to anyone? Oh, congrats, Sean. You might actually live to see the end credits in this one. They find a buried ship where the buried treasure very well may be. 
I didn't think he was as crazy an investment as everyone said. I'm just relieved that I'm not as crazy as everyone says. Said the actual Nicolas Cage, never. Oh, look out! Something that would be PG-13 today! I found something! And they don't find the treasure, but rather a badass looking pipe. I mean it, if King Arthur got high with Gandalf, that'd be what they use. I need to think. In a surprise surprisingly very long conversation that lasts about eight minutes. Christ just sitting in one spot for a Bruckheimer movie? That's like three hours. Ian reveals he's betraying Ben by doing the unthinkable. Hunting the treasure to get rich. <laughs> Where did that come from? I arranged a number of operations of questionable legality. What makes it even funnier is what sets this all in motion. They discover there's a map on the back of the Declaration of Independence. Some would say, that's crazy enough. Ian says he wants to steal it, but Ben says no, that'd be wrong. Even though that's exactly what he does later. I'm not gonna let you steal the Declaration of Independence. I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. It's a little weird that that's what gets this all going. The ship is covered in barrels of gunpowder because it's Jerry Bruckheimer, assume everything is. And the ship blows up, separating them. They try to let the FBI know Ian's gonna steal the Declaration, but no one believes him. We don't need someone crazy, but one step short of crazy, what do you get? The surreal sustainability of your career? Passionate. They go to the National Archives and talk to Dr. Abigail Chase. Abigail. Adams Chase? Okay, how can you not bait people with this setup? Played by Diane Kruger. Now you told my assistant that this was an urgent matter? Well, I'm gonna get straight to the point. Both are sure callers, they're out of control. Someone's gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. And while we're here, we might as well see if there's a treasure map on the back. What do you think you're gonna find? The location of hidden items. A treasure map? That's where we lost the FBI. But then QAnon started calling us. Not surprisingly, they're kicked out, but Ben can't help but look at the declaration and admire the history that this movie is completely bullshitting on. It is their right, it is their duty, to throw off such government and provide new guards for their future security. Okay, if every history book had an audio narration by Nicolas Cage, I would have aced every history class. He says the thing. I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. I'm also gonna steal America's hearts. Aww. But understandably, Riley is not on board. Prison. You are gonna go to prison. You know that. Yeah, probably. Word for word what his accountant said around this time. Riley tries to show the hundreds of security features used to keep the declaration safe, and I don't know, after seeing the security on tinfoil viking hat day, I'm doubting how high tech this really would be. It is lowered into a four foot thick, concrete, steel plated vault. It's also where they keep the president's real approval ratings. Oh yeah, they're even lower. He eventually convinces Riley to help and they break in, of course, the same day Ian's group breaks in. It's all typical heist stuff you've seen in a million movies, but if you're a sucker for that shit like I am, it is fun to watch. I love the different styles too, how one sneaks in through the sewers in secrecy and the other walks through the front door in public. It's a fun contrast between the two. How do you look? Not bad. I don't recognize myself without meme text all over my face though. But come on, the password to actually get to the Declaration of Independence? Gravy Flow, Valley Frog. It's Valley Forge. It's Valley Forge. You press the email twice. That's the stupidest combination I ever heard in my life! Yeah, my email requires a number and capital letter, and the password for the Declaration of Independence is that? At least have it be a capital Valley Forge with a zero for the O. Are you trying to steal that? He sneaks out through the gift shop in what might be my favorite scene in the movie. It's $35. For this? I apologize ahead of time for the job you're about to lose, but you're gonna look back at what I said later and laugh. But Abigail is there too and puts together what's going on. Oh my god, you did not! Security! Over here! Give me that! Yours! Take it! You see, this is why Cage is perfect. With any other leading man, you would know instantly he would have given her a fake, but with Cage? Why not a- Give me that! Yours! Take it! It had mustard on it. I hate mustard. It's my least favorite condiment. It's like a mix of urine and shit. Just say no to mustard! Go ahead. Ian sees what's going on though, and while I refuse to believe it's easier to kidnap a woman than just pull a tube out of her hand, it does lead to a pretty fun chasing. Ah! Thank you. Ah! Ah! I gotcha! I, where's the declaration? Swing back there and get it! 
He catches her and reveals, no big surprise, that he switched the document with the poster. There's two Really weird lines I want to draw attention to here. One is when he's checking to see if she's all right, and then he randomly asks if she's hungry. You're not hurt, are you? You're all lunatic. You hungry? What? Are you all right? Not sure if that's just Cage being Cage, or if the movie got early onset dementia. And the other is Kruger's reaction to all this, which is so childishly straightforward, it's amazing. Who were those men? Just the guys we warned you were gonna steal the declaration. We did the only thing we could do to keep it safe. That's dumb! <laughs> Who was constructing this script and was like, hey, you know what I think would go amazing right here? That's dumb! That's dumb! I mean, she's not wrong, but a doctor said that? That'd be like King Theoden looking at the army of orcs in Helm's Deep just saying, balls. I don't disagree, but you can be a little bit more eloquent. Behold the amazing Duggo, Alakazam! You now have food at your front door! Go ahead, go check! I'll wait! Was it not there? Oh poop! Should have used DoorDash! For DoorDash is like magic! This past year has taught us to savor every moment together! Spend less time prepping and cooking and more time with the people you love! With the help of DoorDash! The thing I just said! Alakazam magic a doo Get what you want to eat right now and right to your door with DoorDash! Along with restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash! Get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour! Craving late night ice cream? Forget that one key ingredient for dinner? Or maybe you just need to stop up for this week. With DoorDash, get everything in one app. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeyes, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. Ordering is easy, and your items will be left safely outside your door when you choose contactless delivery drop-off. And right now we have a special offer, which is like magic, except it's an offer, and nothing like magic. For a limited time, our viewers can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on the first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code Nostalgia. That's 25% off up to $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code Nostalgia. Don't forget that's code Nostalgia for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Well, let me try another trick. I'm going to pull a delicious drink out of my hat. No, I'm not. Should have used Liquid IV. The new year is here, and there's no better way to kick off 2022 than by making sure you're feeling like your best self. One goal I have for myself is to get more fit, and I will be doing that with the help of my favorite hydration product, Liquid IV. For I cannot magically make these pounds disappear. I must use science, the science of magic, or Liquid IV. One stick of Liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. Liquid IV has incredible hydration flavors like watermelon, lemon lime, strawberry, pina colada, and more! That's actually my favorite thing about it, the flavors! The pina colada is especially delicious. Abracadabra, debracadabra, habalida! Eh, oh, magic words. It contains five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C, with three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks, made with premium ingredients, non-GMO, and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. What makes Liquid IV so effective? The science of cellular transport technology. Designed to enhance rapid absorption of water and other key ingredients into the bloodstream. In fact, Liquid IV is on a mission to change the world. Liquid IV has donated over 19 million servings globally. So say the magic words. Do 20 times upside down, or you could just grab Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco. Or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code Nostalgia at checkout. That's 25% off your order when you use the promo code Nostalgia at liquidiv.com. Experience better hydration today at liquidiv.com and use the promo code Nostalgia. Now, watch me disappear. Magic is a lie. New Year means a new game to play for Disney December. I'm gonna be playing Spider-Man for the PS4 every Friday on Twitch. We have content six days a week, so come check us out. Hope to see you then. After Ben shows his understanding of how to treat a delicate historical parchment. Anyone can steal this, either. Yeah, these scenes play great back to back. It is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government either.
Dr. Chase, no, she would have had Cajun's big daddy soup at this point, agrees to tag along as she doesn't want to leave the declaration. Hold this. Okay. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, suddenly Belle's looking a little at Stockholm, isn't she? They discover, though, that when he was forced to use his credit card in the store, the feds, led by a man named Starsky, played by Harvey Keitel, know where he lives. So he has to go to a place nobody would connect him to, his father's house. You disappoint me, Ben. Well, maybe that's the real Gates family legacy, sons who disappoint their fathers. Treasure is a myth. I refuse to believe that. Look, I've seen you in interviews. I know you want to get back at the government. His father agrees, and they try to figure out how to reveal the invisible ink on the back. And if you think that sounds like a Marvin Acme creation, the solution might sound like one, too. Lemons. You can't do that. But it has to be done. Listen to that dedication, like he's not about to treat the Declaration of Independence like an appetizer at Olive Garden. Sure enough, it works, and they see more and more of the secrets that were hidden for so long. Follow this, and you will discover the secret of these nights. Oh, come on! His dad is finally convinced and agrees to cover for them when the feds show up, which they eventually do. Gonna untie me? Ah, uh, Angelina clearly dropped by. Here, I took this from his house. He usually tucks a few hundred dollars somewhere between those pages. Of course he stole his common sense. That's why he's been acting so crazy lately. I think there's an interesting story in there. They follow more clues, but also realize they need a change of clothes. Not sure what changing room barely comes up to your nipples, but for a Disney film, this is like second base. The vision to see the treasured past must refer to a way to read the map. One of the clues, it appears, might be on the etchings of a hundred dollar bill. On the back of a hundred dollar bill is an etching of Independence Hall based Hello. on a painting done in the, thank you, in the 1780s, who, and this guy, the artist was actually a friend of Benjamin Franklin. I think this is just how Nick Cage buys things, like he'd give the same speech no, if he was purchasing wait, cheese. Wait what do you see? 2.22. So apparently, at the time the clock says, the sun will reveal the next clue on a brick in a wall by the Liberty Bell. Of course, seeing how the planets rotate, the brick it would point out would change quite often. While that may sound outlandish when you see womanizing Ben Franklin made X-ray specs, suddenly I find something I can believe in this. <sighs> what do you see? Okay, I think this whole movie was a bet just to see if they can make a Nicolas Cage treasure hunt movie where he wears 3D glasses. Again, nowadays it's hard to see a movie where he wouldn't do that. Ian and his men find them, though, and steal the declaration while Riley and Chase just sit there. I mean, I guess, what would they do? Combined, they weigh like a pound. Mr. Gates, face your father's car and put your hands behind your back, please. To make things worse, Ben is captured by the feds who decide to use him as a means to get the declaration back from Ian. We can take a look at the declaration and then you can be on your way. Yeah, I'm supposed to believe that. I only wanted to borrow it. You can have it. And the glasses. I realized the true treasure was the friends I tried to kill along the way. Ben manages to escape the feds, though, because you can't cage a cage! And he meets up with Ian's men. What'd you do with Abigail and Riley? Ask your girlfriend. You leave Riley out of this. No, it turns out Chase and Riley are now happily working with Ian. If Ian tries to double cross us, we can call the FBI and tell them right where you are. Yeah, every dynamic in this movie is odd. And Ben eventually meets up with him. A jump like that could kill a man. No, it was cool. You should try it sometime. No, I've died enough times. Ian has a catch, though. Ben's dad is in his car. God, this poor guy has more duct tape on him than red green. <laughs> we have to go inside Trinity Church. Ben takes him to where the next clue is, and the proper attitude of, oh yeah, we're hostages, starts to set in again. McGregor, Victor, you stay here. And if anyone should come out without me, well, use your imagination. It's PG. You always have to use your imagination. Random moment for a kiss? Sure. Come here. Sorry, it's the nothing. Nothing indicating to kiss you made me want to kiss you. They find a rickety old staircase that's as safe as a rickety old staircase as they try to survive the place falling apart. Believe it or not, this is the climax. Oh, I'm paralyzed from the waist down, but aside from that, I'm fine. So where's the treasure? This is it? We came all this way for a dead end? They get to the treasure room, but find it's apparently just another clue. Jesus, the mystery machine following Colonel Muster wouldn't find this many clues. I wonder if there's another clue. They don't know right where to find you. Ian 
leaves him there while he searches for the next clue, but it turns out that was just a fake out for another fake out. I just really thought I was gonna find the treasure. Just what he said when he started Sorcerer's Apprentice. But as mentioned, it was another fake out. As one escape room over, the true treasure is revealed. Riley, are you crying? Look. Stairs. What else did this team write? Okay, that makes a lot more sense now. They do take the <laughs> stairs. And Starsky shows up after being told they found the treasure. You do know you just handed me your biggest bargaining chip. Declaration of Independence is not a bargaining chip. How dare you lessen its value like that? It's clearly a treasure map! Give it to the people. Divide it amongst the Smithsonian, the Louvre, the Cairo Museum. I think we can trust someone who works for the government. When has lots of money been misused by them? <laughs> he hands over Ian, who's immediately arrested. And for someone who said the treasure wasn't about the money, Ben gets a lot of money. Okay, I'll tell you what. The next time we find a treasure that redefines history for all mankind, you make the call in the fire scene. <laughs> you joke, but that's literally the next one. What do you care? You got the girl. It's true. It's true. That's Doctor the Girl. <laughs> now that was National Treasure. Pretty routine, but I really do mean it when I say Cage makes this movie. Now that the rest is bad, it's just very run of the mill. Cage really is the crazy in the crazy glue holding this all together. The irony is, he doesn't even act that crazy. It's just the right amount of odd and charming that keeps you liking him enough to be invested. Neither he nor the movie wink too hard, even though you can tell they're all aware this is... How did Chase put it? That's dumb! Right. Had Cage not been in it, a lot of these sequences would have been more ho-hum without any bite and probably bother me more. But he really does carry it through. So, if you're in the mood for something stupid, but charmingly stupid, this is not a bad way to waste a couple of hours. I'm the Nostalgia Critic guy, remember? So you don't have to. You hungry? What? Are you all right? Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out, and the charity this week is The Dwelling Place. Uh, this is a Christian ministry providing healing and hope to victims of domestic abuse through supportive services and a safe place to call home. It was established in 1998 to provide for both the physical and spiritual needs of a woman and her children after fleeing a violent partner. They identify their core values and guiding principles for all operations and relationships of the ministry with a four-star rating on Charity and Navigator. This is a very, very good one to check out. So, as always, uh, please take a look at it and see if this is uh, something you may want to donate to or, again, maybe even volunteer at. Uh, if not, just spread the word. I mean, e even if other people don't, whatever, donate or volunteer at, just knowing there's places like this out there that can really help out or if you're someone that, you know, has gone through something like this, here's a place you can go. So, uh, definitely spread the word if you can. Just all the good that people are trying to do out there. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Take care.